Hello, and welcome to this presentation from Current Technology. Current Technology is the number one name in surge suppression. Professionally installed Current Technology products provide superior protection against transient surges, preventing unnecessary downtime and costly repairs. In this presentation, we're going to be talking about all kinds of issues related to surge protection. Transient surge events, surge protection devices and how they work, temporary overvoltages, what kind of transient surge and overvoltage protection is available, and what kind of protection might be the best for you. We'll also perform a couple of demonstrations that'll show how current technology's catastrophic protection system, or CAPS, offers superior protection against power quality events. So, let's get started. A transient voltage surge suppressor, or TVSS, and a surge protection device, or SPD, are the same thing. It's a device designed to protect circuits from damage caused by transient surge events. According to IEEE's Emerald Book, a transient surge event is an extremely large overvoltage, more than 1.8 times the nominal voltage, and lasting for a very short period of time, from one nanosecond to 100 microseconds. Transient surges can be caused by internal or external events. External events happen less often, but cause more damage. Examples of external events are lightning, wind-damaged power lines, grid switching by the utility company, or accidents. Lightning can be a cloud-to-ground strike or a direct strike, but the most common form of lightning is cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning. This can radiate an extremely powerful electromagnetic pulse that can couple with virtually every object on the ground. Current from lightning can range from a few hundred amps to more than 500,000 amps. But 80% of transient surge events originate internally. They're caused by equipment motors starting up, lights going off and on, printers, switching motor loads, elevators, any number of events. They're usually not as robust as external events, but they're much more frequent. Transient surges occur hundreds of times a day, and they can cause damage, especially to sensitive electronic equipment. So here's the ideal current flow condition, and here's the reality. Transient surge is happening hundreds of times a day. When a surge protection device, or SPD, is installed in the circuit, it clamps the surge voltage and diverts it away from the load by providing the surge a path of least resistance to ground. The SPD typically has a turn-on voltage above 120% of line voltage, meaning that it always allows a small amount of energy, called the let-through voltage, to reach the load. The most commonly used component in SPDs for transient suppression is the metal oxide varistor, or MOV. Most SPD manufacturers use the MOV. It has great clamping characteristics, excellent current capacity, and low cost. It also has a finite life if it's misapplied. The MOV's life is directly related to the duration of a power quality event. They're designed to suppress transient surges, which last up to 100 microseconds. But what if the event lasts longer than that? We'll learn more in our next segment. In the last segment, we talked about transient surges. Now, let's talk about power quality events that last longer than transient surges. Transient surges last from one nanosecond to 100 microseconds. A surge that's 1.8 to two times the nominal voltage and lasts from 100 microseconds to eight milliseconds is called a temporary overvoltage, or TOV. A swell lasts from eight milliseconds to a full minute at 1.1 to 1.8 times the nominal voltage. Moderate TOVs are associated with three phase systems and line to earth faults and they can create 1.73 times the normal line voltage in other phases. Extreme TOVs can be caused by commingling, perhaps a high voltage line coming in contact with a low voltage line. Double voltage TOVs are associated with a loss of neutral in a single phase system. Swells are created from imbalances in the power lines caused by upstream short circuits and lightning surges affecting the capacitor banks. TOVs are difficult or impossible to prevent in the normal course of operating a power system. And SPDs that use MOVs do not have the energy handling capacity required for limiting TOVs or swells. Since MOVs are designed to suppress only transient surges, 
When they're exposed to power quality events longer than 100 milliseconds, they're stressed, resulting in degradation or failure. MOVs are manufactured with varying capacities for handling voltages. This rating is called the Maximum Continuous Operating Voltage, or MCOV. When the voltage in the line exceeds the MCOV for more than two cycles with sufficient follow current, the MOV degrades and or fails. Prolonged exposure to temporary overvoltage events degrades the MOV, resulting in increased clamping levels, lowering their effect of maximum continuous operating voltage, and causing failure at a lower level of overvoltage. In our next segment, we'll demonstrate what happens to an MOV during a temporary overvoltage. In this simple demonstration, you'll see what happens to an MOV when it's subjected to a temporary overvoltage or a swell event. Using a transformer and a variac, we can take a 120 volt input and vary the output between 0 and 300 volts. We're testing an MOV rated at 150 volts. This is the most common MOV used on 120 volt based systems. By pressing the fire button, a timing circuit allows the displayed voltage to be seen by the MOV in 30 cycle bursts. 30 cycles is half a second. Current transformers are attached to an oscilloscope to detect when current flows through the MOV. A displayed current on the oscilloscope will tell us at what voltage the MOV starts clamping, when it actually starts working. Now we'll start testing at 150 volts. Since the oscilloscope didn't register any data, we can determine that the MOV did not clamp at 150 volts. The full extent of that overvoltage event was seen by the protected load. Now we'll increase the output to 200 volts. And again, the oscilloscope didn't register current flow from the MOV. The MOV did not provide protection. Now let's increase the voltage to 220. And now we see that the MOV is beginning to clamp the voltage. And we see the amount of current that flowed through the MOV as indicated on the oscilloscope. I'll reset the scope before the next test. Now let's increase the voltage to 240 volts. And as you can see, the MOV failed. So this test clearly demonstrates that surge protection devices using only MOVs are vulnerable to long duration events such as TOVs or swells. This was a one half second event at 240 volts. So the choices seem to be, one, selecting a surge protection device with a high maximum continuous operating voltage that will make it immune to most TOVs, but giving you in return diminished surge protection because it's letting higher TOVs through the line, or two, selecting an SPD with a lower MCOV that will limit more TOVs, but will have a greater risk of failure. But are these choices your only choices? We'll find out in our next segment.